All right, folks, welcome back. Not sure when the last video I put up was, but uh, here we are. <laughs> so I want to talk a little bit about drama and the facts and where all this can settle. I'm open for it to be. However, I'm prepared either way. But I want to kind of like give you a little bit of a history here. I promise you I'm going to show you something in this video, but I want to get this out of the way first because there's a lot of nonsense being thrown around on YouTube and social media. And it pertains how I am afraid to trade live when I'm not. This is the contest I invite everybody to join me in every single year since 2013. Not one trader, not one trader on Twitter, not one trader on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Discord, Telegram, nowhere, zero, wants to join this one. They have a thousand different reasons why. None of them make any sense. But I want to go after a couple things here because they say this is a stupid contest. Okay, this is a, a nobody contest when this has always been the industry standard. Period. When you're talking about trading competitions, this is the trading competition. It's the World Cup. See this guy right here? This is the dude that was my original mentor. Now, Ken Roberts obviously was the first person to introduce me to formal training outside my uncle. My uncle introduced it to me when I was 16 years old. And I really wasn't interested to the degree that obviously you see me at now. It was just a, eh, you know, it's interesting. <laughs> but after losing money with Ken Roberts, and you know this stuff, um, this guy here apparently bought the mailing list that Ken Roberts sold. And Larry Williams became my mentor. And that actually occurred in the year 1993. No, 1994. Obviously, he has the highest rate of return, 11,376% return. This actually was almost double, but he got hurt in the crash in 87. So he is a legend, okay? He's a bigger name in the industry than I am. This guy here is not a nobody. He's, he only had to do this one time, folks. <laughs> Never had to do it. Then his daughter here. She did it and made a thousand percent return. Now, there's a lot of people in here that, you know, I don't know who they are. They say that, uh, you know, when's a student of ICT ever going to make it on the leaderboard? Well, it's been here all this time. Now, don't snicker because 24% isn't obviously 11,000% or 1,000%, but Steve Garner is my student. I was teaching back in the mid and late 90s and this gentleman here is who I refer to all the time when I'm talking about my old 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 students as gate trader. Okay? Steve Garner is still in my mentorship today. The question of privacy and all that stuff since this gentleman's name has been on the leaderboard since 2000, I'm not really saying anything that would break privacy. This guy learned from me. Okay. My stock stuff was in its infancy back then, and he still won that year. 24% is respectable for a rate of return. And for 21 years ago, you know, that's pretty good. It certainly beats the 3% that won here. <laughs> Didn't, get, didn't obviously get close to this guy here, but hey, you know, I have a student on the leaderboard. The question is, do you know this last name? You ever read any trading books? Might want to look into that name. That name appears several times on here. So there's a question that comes up a lot. And this guy here shows up several times. He's, he makes it on the leaderboard, but doesn't close out 
really strong, but he's out there all the time putting it out there. Real money, putting it up. I think he's on Twitter too. But uh, the rates of return on here, they're realistic, folks. And to me, these are rates of return that are very well, very exceptional rates of return. People will pay you if you can do these rates of return, even if you did one quarter of the rates of return that you see here, because most people lose. Now, the, the common escape for wanting to do something else besides this tournament or competition is it takes all year long. Well, it really doesn't take a whole year long. Well, it doesn't really take an entire year if you're good and you can do all of the trading, the superhuman feats that we see on social media. If they just did that for a few months, I'm sure they could climb above. Let's look at the uh, futures division right now. Right now, it's 201%. That seems like it's realistic in terms of everybody out there on social media. They should easily be able to beat this. Even using the industry initial margins for futures, because that's what's being used right now as a reason for, I'm not going to trade in this contest because, because they want to use a $500 initial margin. I understand margin and I know what the margins are here. When I traded futures as a new developing student, that's the first lesson you learn. Initial margin, maintenance margin. I learned intimately all about margin calls in 1992. Okay, I am not oblivious to how this stuff works. I think that if someone's going to challenge someone, it should be in a setting that is a challenge. Use the industry standard margins. Use sound risk management and be responsible with your equity. Otherwise, that's really not skill, that's gambling. And for the most part, I think that this is the better measuring stick than any contest with like an MT4 account or a uh, alter any alternative. Okay, and I'm speaking specifically of futures trading. Now they do have a forex division over here, and you can use an MT4 account there. You just can't bring your rented MT4 server, which I have never used, and I'm certainly willing to compete in this one. Or in this one, it doesn't make a difference. This one here, you only need $5,000 to get into it. This one here, $10,000. Okay. So I shared on my community tab how someone trading the futures division doesn't really need extremely low, low, low margin that a discount broker may offer. You don't need to have all of those things as a I don't want to say gimmick because I can appreciate someone that wants to maximize their, their rate of return. I am an old school person. I like to think that someone that can start with the minimum and work up from there. When I say minimum, I mean the lowest contract starting point or lot size or position size to say it that way. And if you can build that up, starting with one contract and eventually getting to two and then eventually getting to four and then eventually to eight and or however your system would allow for. I'm not trying to promote Martingale because that's obviously ridiculous, but there's a way to do this. Be third party audited, be respected. There isn't really, except for my student from 2000, there is nobody else's students on this leaderboard. They're not there. Okay. Not on Twitter. Not on, well, let me, let me rephrase that. I'm not saying something accurate here. The guys, uh, Robert Miner. Now he's obviously the person that sells books and courses and such, but he got himself out there 86 and a half percent for index and interest rate futures. So that's year 2018. That's not a bad return. See, the problem is, is a lot of you folks see things that I've done in demo accounts. And I've said this very openly. I've ran up demo accounts without a rented MT4 server. And then when everybody accused me of using an MT4 server, I went to trading view. 
trading view is what everybody answered me when I was asking them collectively on social media. I think it was on Twitter before I left Twitter. I'm no longer on Twitter. I asked, you know, what's the alternative that everyone would have much more respect for? And it was this platform here. Now it's not a broker, but it's a medium for me to be able to teach in that's real time and allows me the opportunity to use the limitations of teaching within the scope of legality. And what do I mean by that? I'm not a licensed trade advisor. I'm not in a position to be able to tell you how to put your money at risk and how to speculate in the marketplace with live funds. So to protect myself and you, I have openly always used a demo account and I've always referred to the paper trading module on this platform right here. Paper trading, I am ICT. This is how I protect myself. There are so many people out there that would blow their accounts up and then say, well, you did this to me. No one can do that with me. When they come into my mentorship, they sign a agreement that provides me indemnity. I, I'm not at risk anymore because they sign and acknowledge that what they're learning is price action through the scope of a demo account and or paper trading. No money can be made or lost in that medium. But you're studying a reoccurring phenomenon and patterns that repeat over and over again in, with the logic that I teach. If it doesn't hold up, if my students come in and they see what I teach, right away they see there's validity to it because otherwise they'd say, oh, this is a farce, I'm out of here. I guarantee you I am the largest educator in Forex. I am the largest one, okay? The largest one that has nobody out there saying, here's what he said this day, here's what he said that day, here's what he said this day, and it was wrong, he's lied about this, he's lied about that. But you see all of these folks out there that have something of their own to sell. Many times it's a derivative of what I've taught, and they're trying to tear me down to build themselves up. And that to me is stupid because Everybody's welcome to come in here and see in this YouTube channel what it is I teach from a public level. Okay, that threshold of public education is still very good. But the folks that have made their way into my mentorship, they really see everything that goes on. And I speak very freely there. I don't hold trades for an average of less than two minutes. Okay, uh, I teach how to position trade. I teach how to swing trade, short-term trade, day trade, scalp. All of those ideas I teach, but I give the students the flexibility to determine what it is that's best suited for them. And I teach them how to scale these concepts into a manner that provides a foundation for their unique model. Because not every student is going to be able to come to me and fit in this specific model. Like I don't have a cookie cutter approach that fits every single trader because that doesn't work. Okay. It does not work. You're going to find that your reviews from students will be, well, they won't be what you were hoping for because that limitation in humans is a reality. All of us have different perspectives, different personalities and different ways of thinking about things. And that's a barrier because when I teach my students and the question I have a I have a piece of paper here with a couple things on a hit list I want to go through here. The question is all time, you know, ICT, how long is it going to take for me to be a consistent trader? Number one, I can't give you a definitive answer, but I'm going to tell you what the minimum is. The minimum is 18 months. That is the answer. Stop listening to these people out there say that I tell you everybody it's going to be 10 years, 20 years. It's forever. These are people that were lazy. They were under my tutelage and said, to hell with this. This is too much effort. I'm going to learn some kind of indicator stuff. And they are not profitable. <laughs> okay. They're, they're on Twitter pretending they're crypto geniuses and they have all kinds of money and they have nothing. Okay. They're failed. So here we are with a definitive answer. How long does ICT say it takes to be a consistently profitable trader? The minimum 18 months. It took me six years to figure out what it is that fits me personally. Why does it take 18 months? Because number one, 
you have to see a full calendar year. If you're a new trader that's never been exposed to financial markets, you have to see the seasonality and cyclical nature that the market presents you over the course of a 12 month calendar year. Learning those concepts, once you have them at the end of the year, which is what I call core content, then you have an approach to go and study minimum of six months. If you can show profitability on paper through a demo account for six months, then and only then are you able to go into the market with live funds when you decide to do so. Not when I say, I never say go into live funds trading because it's a personal choice that you have to assume the risk for. I shouldn't be making that decision for you. No other mentor or educator should be doing that either. No mentor should come out there and say anything like less than 12 months, you're ready to rock and roll because you're ill-equipped because you don't know what the seasonal impacts are. And you see these folks out there, they have these things that are marketing here and here, look, here's where my trading was really good for this time period. And you can see these drops in their equity. Well, I appreciate their honesty and showing, and showing things to us like that, but you can really see where their problems lie because there are certain times of the year, certain things are going to most likely occur. That's what I teach. I teach a completely comprehensive approach to viewing how all these markets tie together. And you get a sampling of that on this YouTube channel. The problem is majority of folks come here and they want to have a one, two, three system real quick. Give it to me fast and sweet. And I'm going to be out and make my own money. And thanks for everything. ICT. Goodbye. I wish it was like that because I would literally be a billionaire because I would market those things to death. But unfortunately, sound risk management requires a lot of theory, experience, and your experience, not someone else saying, I'm the greatest in the world, which I never say I'm the greatest in the world. I hate that expression. My students know this. And if you ever come to my Telegram channel, when I do open it up for dialogue, as soon as I start seeing that, I delete the comments and I tell them, don't call me that. I'm not Forex Jesus. I'm not the, the market messiah. I, I don't. I don't like those terms. I hate those types of things. And that's the number one reason why I keep the community tab and video comment section closed because it's a sugar high and nobody wants to see all that. It's sickening. While I appreciate it personally, I don't feel comfortable receiving that kind of praise. So I avoid it because it's not necessary. So with all this drama going on, uh, the, the question comes up with, you know, where's all this, where's all this coming from? Uh, I'm going to give you a brief history with this and then we'll get into what it is I want to share tonight because I'm going to talk a little bit about why order blocks did not stop working in 2009. Um, obviously you can see there's been a track record with me on social media where I'll go toe to toe and, uh, butt heads with other people. Usually it's because they mentioned me first and that's pretty much 90% of the time what's going on. Um, I try to stay in my own lane because it's very easily distracting me from my normal things. Like tonight, I should have done a mentorship video, but this is kind of like the mentorship video for all of you in the public. And I'm taking away from my private group. They'll have to just give me the, the latitude to do this because they get much more videos than they paid for. <laughs> and I got to get this off my chest because it got personal recently and I just want to air it out right here publicly so that we all know what's going on and for the most part, what I believe it originated from. Uh, a couple years ago on Twitter, when I was on Twitter, uh, there was a big heated debate going on about, you know, who's a good trader, who's not a good trader, who's a fake trader. And Vinny E. Minnie and Adam Webb from Macro Hedged, they have crossed one another. I don't, I don't know how it started, uh, but somehow I got drug into it and I was in, direct messages with both Adam Webb and Vinny E. Mini and Tom Dante. And it was just like, we were all going around, you know, trying to you know figure out you know, what the hell's going on here. Adam wanted me to destroy Vinny E. Mini in a trading contest. And I saw what was going on and how they were going back at each other viciously on a personal level, not in trading, not anything like, the sport of it, it was getting nasty. And I was like, you know what? I ain't getting involved in that. Okay. And I just said, no, I'm not going to do that. 
And I told Adam, I said, I kind of feel sorry for him because he's, he, he looks like me. Like I, I have made this very public. I am bipolar. It is a mental issue. Okay. I don't try to feign that. I don't hide from it. I tell everybody. And if you see me, you know, if you've watched any time that I've spent on social media, I can't dial it in sometimes. It just, it's once it starts, it just has to run its course. And sometimes I'll act out of character for some of you, but for the most of you that's been around for a long time with me since at least 2010, you know, I can be very volatile sometimes. And that's one of the things that make me not the ideal mentor for some. And I, I can appreciate that. I certainly can respect that, but it doesn't negate the things that I know and the things that I teach and the things that I can do. Somehow in that timeline on Twitter and all the, the back and forth that was going on, um, Vinny was basically asking me, can you defend me? Like you need to say this and say that. And I just didn't want to be a part of it. Like I did not want to be a part of it. And I guess, you know, um, I was a jerk because of that, which it was not me trying to be involved. Like I didn't want to get involved in all that stuff, but here we are today. You know, I, I see Vinny and Minnie out there saying that I owe him an apology and I should have did something, you know, to save him and, and, and you know, root for him. And because I had a platform and I should have done this, I don't really understand what it is that he's aiming for, but you know, the only thing I think I owe an apology for is calling him outside of his name. And outside of that, you know, there's really nothing for me to apologize. You know, whatever he was having a beef with, you know, it has nothing to do with me. But I can create my own drama. I don't need to be drug in by my hair <laughs> and somebody else's stuff. So, but that was the the short of it in the Twitter days. I did not quit Twitter because I was running a fake MT4 rented server and I was going to get you know busted or exposed. I was actually trolling unbelievably trying to get Astro Effect Sean Lee to get into that same World Cup trading contest because I know for a fact, like everyone else did, he was using a rented server and he would not budge. He would show withdrawal statements. So I photoshopped a, I don't recall exactly what number it was. I think it was like $3 million withdrawal. And I purposely left the hyphen off and I just said, yeah, you know, life's great. And this is the way it is because that's the image that these guys treat you know, their life in front of everybody on Instagram. I was a troll 24 seven on Twitter. That was my playground, but I did not run up those millions of dollars with a rented server on an MT4 rented server. Let's put it that way. I, I've never done that. The commodity futures trading commission, the FTC, SEC, everybody out there can come here and investigate me and there ain't no way they're going to find anything like that absolutely whatsoever. Didn't happen. Okay. The question arose that I was using an MT4 server and or using delayed data. So as soon as those questions came up because of Adam Webb, and I appreciate it, I'm, I'm thankful that Adam put that video out because it helped me stay in a different class. I said, okay, I'm not staying in MT4. I'm leaving MT4. And I asked the community on Twitter, hey, what's the most reputable alternative that you know people would appreciate learning from me and still protect me? And again, like I said, this was the platform right here, TradingView. So TradingView, just so you guys know, because this is what's also been banded about in recent days, that this right here is the E-mini NASDAQ 100 Futures. December delivery contract. This right here, that means it's a delay. Okay. I cannot make a trade with delayed data. Now watch, I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to go in here and try to create a new order. Oh, Non-tradable symbol. See that? You cannot do this with delayed data. But guess what? On this YouTube channel, you can actually see me trading live data with index features. There's a mystery for you to solve. 
Secondly, there is no delayed data with 4x. When you're looking at a 4x chart here, and I always use 4x.com as a data feed. I teach that through mentorship, and I've taught it consistently. I don't deviate from that feed. That way everyone in this group that I teach always have the same data points, the same highs and the same lows, respectively, on each candle. There is no delay, folks. Okay? Vinny, listen. With all sincerity, I don't know what your problem is. Okay, I'm not equipped to fix it. I'm not assuming that I even know what it is. To the best of my knowledge, I don't think I've done anything to offend you. I've done it to other people, clearly. <laughs> but if I've done it, stop beating around the bush and just make it public. And if it's something that I absolutely did and I should apologize for, I would. But I don't believe I've done anything. I don't even understand what it is that you're going on about. But if it's just a question of whether or not I'm a fraud, I don't know how to trade, and I'm trying to defraud people in the public and in my mentorship, I'm going after low-income students. Like, okay. If you look at this chart here, okay, this chart is real-time right now. This is the time and date of today, okay? And this is the time zone I'm in right now. All of these levels here in this specific low, I called this. I mentioned this right here. I talked about this order block right there last Friday. Now, I don't expect you to believe me because I'm saying it here. I have all kinds of examples on my YouTube channel where I'm actually executing. I'm getting in at the highest candle and shorting, and I'm getting out the lowest candle or the very next to the lowest candle when I'm exiting. If I'm using multiple accounts, how the hell am I getting that lucky every time I'm doing it? It would really go against the probabilities. Even if I was using 20 different screens and 20 different things, you know, how the hell am I able to do that? Think about that. Now, put that aside for a moment, okay? Put that aside because I'm going to debunk some more things here. If you're saying that there's delayed data and I'm using delayed data, how am I doing it with TradingView? I would ask respectfully, not just Vinny e Mini, but anybody else out there, show me in the rest of the world how it's done and then tag me on YouTube. I'll see it and then I'll comment on your video. That way everybody that follows me, they'll see that video too. I'm not afraid of any of this stuff, okay? I'm a little annoyed because my wife's cell phone was looked up, and that cell phone, we pay for that, okay? It's in my wife's name, not my name. It's in my wife's name. Why is it in her name? Because she pays for her niece to have it, because her mother can't afford to have a cell phone. So we got her the iPhone. That's what that whole thing was about. That video was to show you and make a documentation because I look, man, this world's nuts. And there's a lot of unstable people in it. I don't want anything happening to anybody in my family because some nutter out there gets a case of the ass with me because I've done something or wouldn't do something. And maybe they don't do something, but they because they do these stunts online. Um, I'm not calling you. I'm not having people call you. I'm not sharing your home address. I know what your home address is. I'm not impressed with your house. I'm not impressed with what you have in your your den or whatever it is you call your your trading room. I'm not I'm not concerned about that. I'm not worried about it. Your house isn't bigger than mine. You don't have more money than me, and you can't trade better than me. That's the extent. That's the direct response that you, if you're looking for it, there it is. You can't beat me in trading. To prove it, I'm asking you to go into Robbins. You don't need, if you made your algorithm, was it AlgoBox, okay? If you designed that logic, if you designed that, if you are the system creator for that algorithm, you don't need the algorithm to trade it. Because I have several algorithms. Some of them are highly, highly sophisticated, and they're quick, high-frequency trades. They, 
they will hammer the market. And they don't even rely on a chart. My real trading has nothing to do with a chart. Zero. This is all time-based. I teach my students that there's this distortion that takes place in time charts like this. I'm not teaching it to YouTube because you're not entitled to it. But my students know that these charts have a measure of distortion that you have to look beyond. In my own personal trading at the highest level, my algorithm, which I call Enigma, which I do not teach, has nothing to do with a chart. Zero to do with a chart. I don't even need a chart. Okay? But to teach things from an algorithmic principle based approach to trading, the things that like order blocks, okay? I, I saw someone sent me a screen section of you know, your order blocks don't work since 2009. Vinny, listen, <laughs> that's a lie, okay? Because number one, I'm going to challenge you to describe in your best understanding what is my order block. And yes, it's my order block. Okay. What is it? What is an order block? Because I guarantee you, you don't even know what it is. My students just recently learned what it is. What is it? Because if you can't define what an order block is, because this sure as hell ain't a supply and demand zone. That is not what this is. And it's a facade to even think that that's what it is. I've destroyed supply and demand and any idea that it's white off. I've done, I've this eviscerated it but you say that order blocks stopped working in 2009 uh no they haven't because i'm checking the year right now and it says that on my calendar it's 10 19 2021 so we're well beyond 2009 and i want you to look at these two down close candles here and see that little line that's the opening price on this candle here I said to my group on Friday of last week that if we trade down to that level here, the opening price, it's going to run up and go into here. I know you probably don't believe me, right? Well, that's why I brought receipts. We're going to go over to my mentorship. And this is what it's like in here. I just borrowed one of my users usernames that way. I don't want to, I don't want to log in as the administrator. So we'll use, uh, here's Monday and I'm not doing a video for tonight for mentorship. So we're going to look at Friday. Here you go. Still inside of the range from the slow and the high formed on Thursday. We did have the formation of the fair value gap and now we have the bullish order block. So now if we can trade down into that and let's say dollar opens weaker. Okay, and creates a, a down gap opening on Sunday's trading. If that occurs and we fail to go higher, or let me say it this way. If you have a gap lower, trades up, fills the gap, and then trades down, that trading higher to fill the gap, if that occurs with the market trading into this area here, with euro, that might be the catalyst for a run up into this high for buy side and then rebalance this. So that would be the stage I would anticipate seeing a higher run on euro dollar. All right. So there you go. That was Friday's video. Now let's go back over to euro dollar for today. Here we have the market trading down, hitting it. There you go. And it rallies. Where does it go? Where I said it was going to go. This is an order block before it happened in the presence of a legion of witnesses. Okay. Now, if that wasn't enough, I got more receipts for you. I'm actually going to show you something that you really aren't entitled to see. And you, I already know some of you are going to think, well, what's the big deal about that? But I'm actually going to demonstrate what IPTA is and what it's not. And the benefits of learning from me, because there's a distinction between what it is that I know that I'm not allowed to give you publicly, not even if you pay me, okay? And what language I created with order blocks and other things that I'm teaching, what benefit is it to learn from me if I'm unwilling to teach you 
the real secrets of interbank trading. Well, I created a language that protects me, and that's the reason why I've been able to do it for this long. It gets you very, very close to what I know that you're not supposed to know. Okay, so if we were all in a room right now and I asked you, raise your hand if you want to see what that looks like. Right now, probably everybody, would, every hand would shoot up right now and say, yeah, let me see that ICT. Let me see it. I want to see it. Hands are rubbing together. Well, it's not going to be all that exciting. But when you see the distinction I'm going to show you, there's very little distinction between it. And that is that gray area that I navigate in by creating this language. I'm not renaming other things. I'm not. And if you sit down and you study with me, you'll see that nothing is like this. There may be similarities because I'm drawing little boxes like this. This is not supply and demand. What I'm actually showing you here, that's an imbalance between this candle's high and that candle's low. It's not a liquidity void. Okay. That's a fair value gap. Why is it a fair value gap? Because it's anchored to this order block. There's a distinct number of things that you have to have for a fair value gap to be a fair value gap. There has to be a specific list of things for an order block to be an order block. It's not a down close candle and an up close candle. There's, there has to be something behind it. And that's what I'm asking you, Vinny, or anybody else out there. If you think you know what an order block is, because there's a lot of people on YouTube creating order block, order block, order block, and none of them have any idea what the hell they're talking about. Because they look at something that's worked in hindsight and say, oh, this is obviously one of those order blocks because it's after the fact. I don't do after the fact. I don't use delay outside of normal delay of delivery. Last Friday, I talked about this order block. Trading down into it here and trading right up to there. Bam. Hello. Debunk it. That's a daily chart. How the hell am I going to have a delay with a daily chart? The delay was weekend. <laughs> okay. The delay was Saturday and Sunday when no trading was going on. Then all of a sudden, here we are. We're trading a new week. Done and dusted. Okay. Now let's go into a little bit finer detail because this is an order block that was shown on a daily chart with my group. So let's go into a smaller time frame. Let's go down to a one minute chart. And look at the distinctions between IPTA, how interbank traders look at the marketplace, and how I bridge that gap with order block theory. Let's go back over to that same video. And let's see, there it is. Let's scrub back here a little bit more. All right, I think it's right there. I want to make sure I have everything in the audio that starts it. Now, I apologize if it doesn't come up very well because this laptop I'm using, when I plug the microphone in, it won't allow me to record the system audio. So this, this entire video may not be the best audio quality, and I apologize for that, but I wanted to be sure that you could hear my dialogue from the videos that I produce in my mentorship so that we can hear it. And it still might not be the best quality, but nonetheless, here we are. Click on this one. All the interest I'm getting, this is aimed at predominantly the 2021 final mentorship group. There's a lot of folks in this group that are asking, because of all the things that's going on in the world, am I going to break my silence and share everything as a final act of rebellion? Um, well, the short answer is going to be no. <laughs> uh, no, I don't want to have that problem. Uh, two, I'm going to show you something in here to prove that what you're learning is good enough. And when I say good enough, it's not like, well, it's substandard in the degree where it would be upsetting. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of walk you through something here. This price that I annotated in the trend line here, it's not obviously anchored to that little pin bar. Um, it's not the fact that it is a imbalance or a fair value gap, uh, it's actually the price level that you would be wanting to buy at or below based on an interbank understanding. Part of the stuff I'm not going to teach you. Okay, so I'm going to show you how that right there at that price or under, every interbank trader that knows what they're looking for 
has bought and or will buy. Now I'm going to go in and enter early just to show you visibility and to show you that what you're learning is infinitely better than anything else out there. And even though I'm not going to divulge everything I'm not supposed to, um, which you were warned before joining here, there is no need to try to pry my hands open and guilt me in emails because the world's going upside down. I'm not going to do it. So I've entered here. Clearly, you can see it's not an order block. It's not a fair value gap. It's not a turtle soup. It's none of those things. Okay, And I'm entering above the price level that interbank traders would be buying at or below. Now, I'm going to show you by doing this how what you've learned or what you're learning from me with order flow and order block theory, this is how I bridge the gap. Well, I'm not only really going to go into detail how I bridge it because there's going to be a bunch of yahoos in here that would literally go out there and try to say, well, you know, I figured out the algorithm too, and this is how I did it, and it would be nothing true about it. So what I've done is I'm watching this price action with you and narrating it. There's going to be an order block forming in the next two or three minutes. But I'm going to show you something in relationship to time and price that you are not going to learn from me. And I know this type of video will make some of you angry. It's not meant to make you angry, but above here is the liquidity that this is going to run for. Now this is a very, very short stop. It's very small. And this candle right here, it's forming. This is going to be the bullish order block. Now you're being trained here to look for the formation of a down candle right there. Okay, when you see that, you want to watch and see if the price trades above it. If it doesn't, then you wait for another down close candle. When the down close candle forms and price trades above it, which it isn't going to do it here because we've already traded lower. Okay, so interbank traders are already entered in below that little line segment. That's like a like a threshold that they would be looking for to enter. And I'm not teaching you what that is, okay? What I'm showing you is by contrast what you aren't learning and what you are learning and how it's superior. You don't need to know everything I'm not willing to share with you. Back below that price level again. Interbank traders will be buying that. And that short-term little low that it created one candle prior to the one that's forming now. If it hit that low or went just below it, that would be an ideal entry for those at the interbank level. They would be buying that right there. Now, ideally, that candle, if it closes down, that's going to be your potential bullish order block if we can trade above it. Notice where my stop loss is. Very, very tight. I know some of you like to daydream about one and a half pip stop losses. <laughs> so we're going to watch and see if price rallies above this down close candle here. And this is all live. It's not sped up. I'm not compressing the time. Everything you're seeing here is exactly how it forms and, you know, develops in the live trade. It's an execution, so it's not the replay button. So I'm zooming in so you can see the fluctuations of all the equity. And that maximum drawdown wasn't even 1.7%. It's not, it's nothing. It's, it's so insignificant. But looking at a number like that, like 3,000, 4,000, something like that, it's not easily palatable. <laughs> it make your, uh, Heart skip a beat. 
but in reference to an equity base of hypothetically 278,000, it's minuscule. All right, price is working its way back above that specific price level. Now, right there, you have a bullish order block on standby. Now, it can run away, and this exercise will just be me entering a trade early and what could have happened for you. But if price can trade back down in to that down close candle, right there's perfect. That is perfect confirmation because we have a swing high that's been broken with a down close candle and we have protraction. So this is exactly what I'm teaching you to look for. All right, I'm going to draw the line on the order block and prove to you by actually typing in the chart when this market should go up. Okay, so <clears throat> we'll just use the high of the candle. I prefer really to use the opening of the price of the candle, the down close candle, but we're just going to use the high. All right, you see what it's doing right there? right there now watch look at the time I'm going to show you here at 1048 to 1052 it's going to run those buy stops that's what I'm showing you here in that little arrow line tool again everything's sped up And I'm literally going to go in and tell you, with typing into the chart, it's not an annotation added with the editing software that I use for creating the videos. I actually go in with TradingView and I type it using the TradingView platform. So that way you can see learning what you're learning here. And here I am about to type it in. Rally higher. Okay, put this right here, scrub over. Now, watch it rally. All right, this is a sped up version because otherwise this would be a very, very long, <laughs> very long video. So I've sped up the time a little bit here just for the purposes of brevity no lower lows that little short-term swing low isn't going to be violated that's confirmation I'm on side so now interbank traders just like I've trained you without learning the actual details that would violate my NDA the relative equal highs that's what they're gonna wait for now they have limit orders up there obviously but I'm gonna take a huge portion of this hypothetical paper trade off above there and just let it go if it came around and hit my limit that's great I don't think it will likely do that but just for the sake of this example I'm just gonna let it ride if it can get above those relative equal highs I'm gonna take the lines portion of that position off right now I got 9.7 million leveraged so I'll take 7.7 uh, .7. in other words I'll just take a full amount of the position on just change the nine to a seven and then I'll close that if we get above there's relative equal highs I'm aiming for specifically a time element okay of 1048 to 1052 that part I can't teach you but you don't need to know that time aspect just getting above those relative equal highs during London close. Okay, I gave you a window of time. So it's time and price. The specifics that gave me the time of exactly 1048 to 1052, that's the part I can't teach you. 
and I'm not going to talk about this anymore. I'm not going to bring it up anymore, and I'm not going to entertain any more questions about, can you teach us more about what? No. <laughs> okay. No. What you're learning is ridiculous in terms of precision. You don't need to know anything more. In other words, that would get me in trouble. All right, so price is starting to expand above. Watch the time. Okay, watch the time in the lower right-hand corner of the trading view. And it's approaching my time window of 10.48. And we're getting some expansions. I'm going to try to get out while it's expanding in my favor. This has gotten close enough for government work, I think. Let's do this. And there you go. Orders are activated. You can see all of the details, and I'll adjust the stop to a point of no real risk, hypothetically. And that is a high-precision scalp. Using what I teach you and contrasting that with the things that I'm not allowed to teach you. So is there any advantage that you could see from you know comparing and contrasting my hope is that you don't feel that oh i need to know some of you are going to be highly highly motivated to need to know how did you know 1048 to 1052 how did you know that that price level you don't need to know that you don't need to know that what you need to know is how i'm teaching you order flow and order block theory and running for liquidity time of day, all those factors. When you understand those things, number one, it's much more simple learning it the way I teach in the mentorship than what I had to learn to understand the things that is going on at the interbank level. So as much as you may feel like it's complicated or that I'm overcomplicating it or shrouding it so you never really learn, that's bogus. Okay, that's somebody that's lazy. That's somebody that has no real interest in working towards learning what it is I'm teaching you. Right here is an example of it, exactly as I teach it. I tell you exactly when it's going to go up. I tell you what I was looking for, why it should go up there. Everything is in this. Okay, I got in a little bit ahead of the price. I was talking about that was the key price level that at that level or below, interbank traders would be buying that. You don't even need to know what that price level is. The fact that you've seen a order block and the market traded above it and then traded back down into it, that's all you need during the time of day. And you can see the clear relative equal highs. So that's what was the driving force for me to create a language so that way my children can learn how to do this. And also, so there you go. It's something that was given to my mentorship group. It was something that I wanted to compare and contrast so they can see the difference because when I'm looking at charts, I'm trying to find a way to communicate what it is that I know about why price is going to be moving and the signatures in price that repeat that are allowing people that study charts in my mentorship and even on YouTube to be able to participate and engage with a reliable consistency, not perfect, not without losing, not without loss, not without adversity because you, it's you're going to fail sometimes. Sometimes I get it wrong. Sometimes I miss moves. Sometimes I do get stopped out and never even sees a profit and it's going to happen. And it's not because the system, the algorithm, the mechanics or logic behind what it is I teach is flawed. It's because I made the mistake, the human, just like you're going to make the mistake and you have to own that. So the other question I, I'm getting that was being raised was, you know, what do I make on YouTube? <laughs> uh, this is my entire 2021 earnings on YouTube. Okay. You see that? Uh, this is how many people subscribe to my channel. Right now, it's 154,104. This channel earned 
$32,567.54 for the entire year. I can tell you that this amount of money wouldn't even pay my utility bills on my properties. Okay, it wouldn't even do it. So I cannot sustain myself on YouTube. I don't live on YouTube. Okay, um, I don't need to work. I don't need to do mentorship. I don't need to do any of those things. Um, I'm independently wealthy and I just live like I'm living. So uh, I, I see a lot of things being shared like it was on Twitter. Um, there was properties that I purchased. Uh, one in particular, um, it's in Dundalk, Maryland. Uh, I do not reside in Dundalk, Maryland, but there is a family member on my wife's side that was very low income. Uh, they did not have the ability to purchase a home. Uh, they did not have the ability to pay the rent that is asked for those individuals in that part of town. Even though it's a very, very low income area, they wanted to have a property there. They knew people in that neighborhood from school and when they were raised, you know, as a younger child, they wanted to be in that area. That was what they're accustomed to. So there you go. I purchased the property, prepared it so that way they could live there. I no longer have that property, but that property was not a rental income, but it was a rental for them. Okay. Um, I don't pay $760. I don't live in an apartment. <laughs> um, I don't know what else to say except for when someone buys property and real estate, uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that they sleep in that property. Okay. So um, some of the things that people promote on the internet are just outright lies. And I don't know how else to, you know, look, I mean, I'm, I'm showing you what it is. I'm showing you what it isn't. And I'm telling you, I am absolutely welcome to the idea of trading, but I'm going to trade in the Robin's Cup. That's the only time I'm going to step out there and put my name in public associated with a contest. I have not done this before. I do not join Robin's World Cup every year and fail. That These are all lies, folks. I, I don't do those things. Okay. My mentorship, I let you see behind the curtain. Okay. Supposedly, order blocks don't work. Ever since 2009, and 2009, nothing happened with order block. <laughs> okay, the, the the idea of an order block is completely alien to all of you. Okay, only those that are in my mentorship know exactly what an order block is. You're familiar with the idea. I've introduced and demonstrated the idea here on this YouTube channel, but you don't know what an order block is. And as I mentioned, only recently I've taught this to my students in mentorship. They know what an order block is. But you don't know what it is. And if you think for a moment that someone's telling you with venom behind their words and they're angry at me or if they don't like me or if they think I'm a fraud because they don't know what I'm doing. Listen, folks, there are so many folks in this mentorship from around the world. If I was defrauding them, I would have all kinds of shit laid on me publicly. That's not what's happening. It's praise, it's appreciation, it's community, it's people being thankful that I'm showing them what no one else is showing them. And I'm not talking about a profitable system because there's a lot of traders out there that have things that I don't subscribe to in terms of logic and they're able to make money with it. That's fine. There's people that make a living handicapping horse racing. I could never do it. But it doesn't mean that their logic is flawed. It just means that they have an edge and they work that edge. It may not be what makes the market do what it does. And they don't need to subscribe to that idea or truth even. They have an edge that they work and they maximize that edge. I'm not oblivious to that. And I'm not closing my eyes and my mind to the idea that people that don't subscribe to the views that I teach and believe and prove unequivocally that these markets are algorithmic. OK, I came out and I said these things. I was the first one to come out in the 90s to state this. And I did it through fear. Through fear, I was afraid initially when I first started talking about all these things. Was I going to get hurt? 
Was something bad going to happen to me? And I've had some close calls. And I've had moments that I don't want to relive. And I don't give a shit if you believe me. It, you don't even need to believe those things. But I had to get it off my chest. And the question is this. If I didn't have all these experiences that I've said openly, how did I learn this? Who is my mentor? I mentioned Larry Williams, but he don't trade like this. He has no idea what this stuff is. In fact, he says Forex is a joke and nobody should do it because it's bad enough that you have to learn how to trade and be right on the direction, but now you have to beat the spread too. Right. <laughs> so I didn't learn from him. And Chris Laurie doesn't do any of these things. Nothing like I teach. It goes way beyond a little bit of this and a little bit of that and balance stuff. No, 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 no. Okay. We don't even consider that approach to trading the way you should be doing it. In other words, so he's looking for closures of imbalances. I don't want a closure of an imbalance. I don't want that. There's a number one distinction right there. Just like people that look at an order block and they see a rectangle in the chart. Oh, that's just supply and demand. And they look at my market maker buy and sell models and they say, that's Wyckoff. And there's no similarity whatsoever. There's distinct things that match up on the buy side of the curve and the sell side of the curve that Wyckoff doesn't even touch on. Many of you, God bless your souls for this. You always say to me, ICT, why do you waste time doing this? Why do you care enough to answer these people? I don't really care to try to convince the people that have adversities with me. I'm not going to convince them, okay, because they have it in their heart that I'm a fraud or I'm wicked, I'm the antichrist, you know, something to that effect. <laughs> I don't know, you know, how I could bridge the gap that is you know, between us. And I can sleep at night knowing that that's never going to be bridged, okay? Uh, my concern is there's somebody, there's somebody that listens to these people and they say, yeah, I'm going to subscribe to what they said without even doing any homework, without even investigating it, not even testing it myself. It sounds appropriate because, because mob rule seems to be effective. So if a lot of people are saying it, then it must be true. If it quacks and waddles when it walks, it must be a duck. Well, the problem with that theory is I have performed like a cartoon for years on social media. And that was my playground. It was my time to unwind and not take myself serious. I did more damage to myself and my own image for parody's sake until 2016. August 2016, I had enough. People started selling my stuff when it was all free. I said, you know what? If anything, I'm going to get paid for it. And that's when I turned monetization on my videos too. So for those that are arguing back and forth, who doesn't have monetization? August 2016, I did turn monetization on my videos on YouTube. Prior to that, there were never any ads generating income for me. And I'll let you see, what was it, in 2020? Here you can see what I made there that year. Nothing. That's hardly nothing. I can't live on that. Come on now. So where do we kind of bring some resolution to all this stuff? Number one, Robin's Cup obviously answers the whole thing. If you have an algorithm, if you have a system, if you think you're better than me, you think you're the greatest in the world, you think I'm a fraud, whatever, join 2022 Robin's World Cup. I don't care what division, futures or forex. If you want to do both, I'll do that too. I will not lose to you or anybody else. I will do it with realistic money management. I will do it in a way that even this YouTube channel teaches. I won't use mentorship level. I won't even use my algorithm. I'll make it fair. And I can start with one contract and build from there. The question is, is why is it that nobody else can do that same thing? There's, it's, there's no reason for that. If you have an algorithm that works, then strip it down, start with one contract, and use the logic that you used to make that system, but do it manually. That's all I did with MT4. 
I did not use a rented MT4 server. And just like you see me demonstrating in TradingView, prove, prove that I'm using delayed data with Forex because there is no delayed data in Forex. And prove that I'm using delayed data with the futures examples I've shown publicly in this YouTube channel and examples in my mentorship because you can't do trades with futures data unless you have a live feed. I did not have a live feed when I showed you this. I don't have it active right now. But when I was talking about, just hang on one second. When I'm pulling this up right now, I don't have a, a uh, what's it, um, a subscription active for this futures. I don't have it. I did when I was doing those trades. I don't need to keep it open because this is, I don't trade through TradingView. <laughs> okay. This is just for me to teach. Now, like I said earlier, I don't hold trades for less than two minutes. Okay. Um, I'm trading very specific things I'm looking for. Uh, the smallest amount of range I'm looking at is 10 pips. Okay. Or 10 handles. This high here, I talked about that being ran out before too. These are actual notes right from my mentorship. Uh, I'm not hiding it from you. And we talked about the moves in this specific futures index for weeks now. And I told my subscribers that they would see this high taken out and maybe even running out this high here eventually. There you go. I just told you what I've been telling them. We've walked this up here and there it is. That's not these little get in, get out, and then raise the you know roof, <laughs> play some music, flat, you know, flashy lights. You know we're the greatest in the world. Okay, but I don't do that. When I get it right in my mentorship, it's the same monotone, boring tone you hear right now. I don't over sensationalize anything, but I am sincere. I look out for everybody. I'm here talking to you right now. Listen, folks, I'm making millions of dollars from people all around the world. They see me doing this every single day. I sit in front of my group every single day, Monday through Friday. They didn't even pay for that. They only subscribed for a Wednesday video and a weekend video and eight lessons, core content every single month for 12 months. They pay for 12 months, pay one payment for 13 for charter. That's 13 payments total. And they never pay anything else again. I do not milk people for life. I do not tell them that it's going to take their whole lifetime to learn how to do this. It's going to take you a minimum of 18 months. And I explained earlier in the video why. Will it take some people longer than that? Yes. Do I have people from my first group in 2016 that have yet to be profitable? Yes. Yes. Do I have people in the 2021 group now that have been funded, learning what they've learned, and now they're able to make money? Yes. How do you reconcile that? It's an individual experience. It's an individual journey. I cannot and no other mentor has the right to say everybody's going to fit inside this mold. And there's uh, an audio clip that was used by Vinny. Vinny, you, you've taken something out of context. When I say I guarantee you will be successful, okay, the context was you will be successful in reading price action. That does not equate to making millions of dollars. Okay. You've never heard me promise. No one has ever heard me say that. But if you listen to me, I'm telling you how to get there. The last thing on my list here. What is my mentorship? Is it me telling you when to get in and buy and sell? No. The lessons teach you how to do those things. What I do is I point to where it's going to go, why it should do it, so that way you're borrowing my experience. You're seeing what 29 years of doing this gives you. I'm not new. I'm not wet behind the ears. I'm not someone who just discovered how to trade. I am every single day in front of my students telling them what's going to happen. And I am in the high 90s in terms of accuracy. There are times where I don't know what it's doing. And I'll tell my students right now, I'm waiting for more information. I don't know if it's going to go higher or lower. So I need this to happen or that to happen. And then if one of those things happen, and that's not plan A, plan B, it's just, it'll give me the new bias that I have to have where I don't have a bias right now. And there's nothing wrong with having a period where you don't know, because that's wisdom. 
knowing where you're going to be wrong. Where is it likely that you're going to get things wrong? You ever seen anybody write a book with that? Nope. Nope. I have a goal of one of my books teaching that specific skill set. Because if you don't know how to know in advance how you're going to fail, and it sounds like, oh, you know, just don't do the wrong things. Right. That, that's, that's the simple way of saying it. But how do you know what you're doing is the wrong thing? And I'm not talking about the cardinal rules of trading no-nos. Don't do this. Don't do that. Like don't over leverage, don't over trade, you know, have a stop loss. Don't trade without a stop loss. You know, don't be reactionary to, you know, news, those, those types of things. They're obvious. But what do you do to avoid losing and identifying character traits within you? Because that's a very ugly topic. None of you want to even recognize that you have the character flaws in you that will absolutely derail you. I have them. That's why I don't accept praise because I was a young 20 year old man that rapidly made lots of money. And I thought my shit didn't stink. Bought cars, bought all kinds of clothes, jewelry, everything high on the hog being big shot. And then suddenly I discovered I didn't know how to trade. 1993, <laughs> that, was, that year was, that was pivotal. That was very, very pivotal. But if we know that we're human, I'm human. I'm not some ethereal entity. I, I'm a real person. I have real emotions. I have a real family that I want to make sure stays out of my online activities. And yes, my wife is highly concerned right now. Yours would be too. I don't make it a point or a practice to mess with anybody's family members. Okay. I know I have a way of protecting myself. And I know I'm not the only person on the planet <laughs> that has those resources too. I am not in the business of upsetting people or making them feel threatened that they have to do things. Okay. And read between the lines. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, why I don't live in a state of fear and walk on eggshells, I'm not going to hold my tongue either when someone's talking mess about me that isn't true. You want to see that I'm not a fraud? Come test yourself. I have a legion of people that watch me see this stuff unfold every single week. If I didn't know what I was talking about, I would have been exposed by my own students. It would have been so easy to been exposed by now. There's all kinds of my content being leaked. Why is it that people find my content that, that's leaked and they're getting funded? <laughs> Think about that. I am not a fraud. I am not someone out there that's trying to lie to anybody. I'm not trying to take anybody for granted. I'm not rooking anybody for lifelong memberships. You pay for a certain amount of time and that's it. You stay in the community as long as you abide by the rules and you're respectful. You're there for as long as this continues. As long as I have my mental faculties, and that could be argued, <laughs> as long as I'm able to obviously read and articulate the things I'm thinking and seeing, and I have an audience, I'll continuously you know, teach the students. And they don't pay anymore. So how, how is that defrauding? I made it a limit on how much you pay, but the limit of learning is non-existent. I have lots of things to teach and the lessons are always ongoing. If anybody says they have my mentorship, they have videos. So what? Those things are just introductions. That's all they are. I have so many things to still teach on, but it requires real market conditions to teach on them because they're very deep lessons and they're things that you're not going to learn without being in front of the charts and I have to call it before it happens. That's how I teach. I don't go into hindsight and talk about something. Oh, hey, look at this over here. I don't do that. And my students will rip me apart if I'm lying. If you're in my mentorship and if I just said something that was completely untrue, create a YouTube channel, put it out there on blast, and even upload the video where I said it and it didn't happen. 
over and over and over and over and over again. Okay. You have my, you have my permission to do that. Now sit back and watch how many times that happens. It isn't going to. Everything that happens on social media when it comes to me is either they rip me off, they copycat what I'm saying, and they try to discredit me while using my stuff. Or they try to discredit me and then come behind and try to sell their own stuff. When I'm just saying, you can do what you want to do, but you're not beating me. You're not beating what I, I do in the marketplace. What I'm teaching is the real logic. You see all these people out there say, oh, he doesn't even know what a market maker is. See, this is stupidity because Joe Blow was a quote unquote market maker for the crude oil market. Okay. First of all, let me explain something to you. You aren't a market maker. You are a dealer. That's what you are. The price isn't even controlled by you. Just like the central banks control the Forex market. They control price. It does not matter how much buying and selling goes on. That price is whatever they want it to be. That's the struggling point that you have. That's what was revealed to me back in the 90s. And everything went from open outcry to electronic trading. And then it all changed. There's a lot of things that were carried over and grandfathered in from out, open outcry. But the overall control was completely reined in. And you have no idea what the hell you're talking about. When you say, oh, market makers don't do this. He doesn't even know what a market maker does. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. You have no idea what you're talking about. The central bank is the market maker. Sorry. And they run everything. Everything from stocks to options to commodities to some degree. But foodstuffs like grains, meats, agricultural markets like that, uh, they do obviously control them too, but there's a large degree of supply and demand factors that are associated with those types of markets. They are the grocery store of the world. So there's going to be a large impact with real supply and demand factors in that asset class. But everything else, it's all a facade and it's artificial and it's controlled to the smallest degree. And you're going to come in and oh, you don't know what a market maker is. You don't know what a market maker is, pal. <laughs> you have no idea what you're talking about. You might have the, the title and the logo, the label given to you. Oh, yeah, I'm a, he's a market maker. You're not making the market. You're dealing in that liquidity pool. That's it. But you are not making the market. Those prices are outside your control. Doesn't make a difference what the volume is at the highest high and the lowest low. If they want the price higher, you aren't preventing it. If they want it lower, you aren't preventing it. You're just going to deal in the feed that's coming to and across your desk. But you are not controlling that. Period. And I think that's about it. So in short, everybody out there is welcome to have their opinion of me. But you're not welcome to say things that are untrue, say things that are baseless, say that I can't trade, say that I don't know what I'm talking about, to say that I'm a fraud, to say that people are being taken advantage of, because I'm going to tell you something right now. If I opened up the mentorship again right now and gave you the opportunity to come in, would you want to take that opportunity? If you did, thumbs up this video. Let everyone and me know that would be something that you would be interested in. After learning everything that you've seen people talking options, lady come out there. Um, I can't think of the guy's name, young, young guy over on the West Coast. Try to do a live stream. I called in, you know, went off on him. I wish I didn't talk the way I did. That's what I regret. I regret losing control of my tongue. That's what I regret. I don't regret standing up against these people. I don't regret being confident because I know my skill set. I know what I'm able to do. But sometimes the human in me, <laughs> it rises up and my flesh is, you know, what it is. It's weak sometimes and I have to lash out because I'm not satisfied otherwise because they won't step. So if all those things you've seen 
And maybe you just recently found me and you're just like, what's going on with all this drama? Listen, it's always been this way. This isn't new. When I was on Twitter, I provoked all this stuff all the time. I did it all the time because I wanted people to test themselves. And I wore the demo baller. I named myself that. that. That came from me. Nobody named that to me. I did it. I'm the demo baller. And I wore it like a crown. And I said, now come knock it off. Think about that. What are you going to say about a guy that says he's a demo baller? And keeps showing example after example after example and willing to do it and begging other people to go into a trading competition that's world renowned, but nobody wants to do it. Where's the logic in that? I've already covered all the excuses as to why somebody would say they don't want to do it, but there's really no excuse. That's the one I'm willing to do. And I have been consistent about it. Don't be afraid of industry standard margins. I don't care about your discount broker. I don't care about that. Because if you know how to trade, you'll be able to do it with a one lot and build it up. It takes a year. Then so what? It takes a year. I'm willing to commit to a whole year. I got no problem with it. I'm, that's how I teach, a full year. And I know what goes on over a year. I know where the sweet spots are. And I know how I'm going to screw up. In those times, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to sit silent. And then when I got a headshot, I'll take it. So maybe a video like this wasn't all that insightful to you. Maybe you were of the opinion that this was a waste of time. And that's okay. That's fine. You're obviously welcome to have that opinion. But I have absolutely addressed and shown proof that I'm not defrauding anybody. And if all of you have been seeing what's been going on, how nobody wants to go into that contest. I'm willing to go there. It's third party audited. It uses industry margins. I don't care if you know you can get it over here and get it over there. Who cares? I don't, I don't care about that. I'm going in proving that I can run something that's realistic in terms of equity and I can literally make it legendary. And I only want to do it one time. I want to do it one time and be done. But don't bring my family into anything. Like if I say something to you or if I retort with something that may be sharp, it's not personal. It's just my way to get a rise out of you so that way you'll go into the Robins with me. I've done this with everybody. Don't take that personal. And I would never, ever do anything to jeopardize anybody's family. I would never do something like that. I've seen your little skit. Apparently somebody's calling your phone. I don't believe that's anybody calling you. I think you have your friends doing that. I believe that those things that you were sharing with all these messages, are you doing that to yourself? Because the messages are happening. You're sending a message and it's coming back within the same minute marker right on your video that you took down. So I have no problem answering all these things. I have no problem showing you in a live setting under third-party audit, that I absolutely not a trade. I can stand in front of a judge and jury, in front of a court, in front of the CFTC, in front of the SEC, FTC, everything. <laughs> okay, line them all up. I will absolutely do this in front of them. Monday through Friday, call it before it happens, execute the whole show. That's why I'm able to do what I'm able to do. I'm doing it within the guidelines of the law. I don't hide from it. I'm not worried about it because literally, if any of those industry watchdogs want to come into my mentorship, they're welcome to come in here and see everything that I say, for the most part, happens. Not everything, it's in the high 90%. But usually, I'm telling you, I'm probably going to be wrong here. <laughs> and I have to put a gun to my head and say, okay, what do I think? Even though I tell my students, this is a time when we shouldn't be expecting anything. But gun to my head, I have to tell them what I think. Those instances, when I'm right, it doesn't count. And when I'm wrong, it doesn't count really either. But I try to teach them, see, this is why I was wrong, because I'm telling you the conditions and the environment that we're in right now is not conducive for high probability. That is wisdom. That's 29 years of experience of losing fortunes and then finally carving out a way that precision leads to what we see here now that I present. 
It's unrivaled, not because I say so, but because it is. Until next time, wish good luck and good trading.